Hi there folks, today I want to talk about database webhooks on Superbase and how to secure them. So by default, when you create a database webhook, you can enter a name for your webhook. You can select which table this webhook should be triggered on, which events should trigger this webhook. And then you can enter the details of the HTTP request you want to do. So the method, the URL, the timeout, and then specify some headers or some parameters. Now for me, within my app, I had two issues. I'm running Superbase on localhost right now, and I have a production instance. So this URL here, I have an API that will listen to those webhooks. So this API will be different whether I'm on local or I'm on production. Uh, and also, there is no signature whatsoever. So I don't want my API to be publicly open and just receive any events from anybody. Uh, so I would like to add a signature to this. So let's talk a little bit about the product I'm building. So I'm building this little app here where I can send invitations to people. So you, I can enter an email. And then as soon as I type this email, I want this invitation to be saved in the database. And then I want the webhook to listen to it and send an email to the person. So I already have a table for my invitations right here. So if I type, let's say I want to invite John Doe, I'm going to invite John Doe, and it's going to create my invitation in my database, as you can see here. Now, I already have my API running to listen to the webhooks, and I already have the setup uh, going. So you can see here that I received the event, public invitation, insert. So that was the insert inside of my database. And so my API responded to this event. Now I'm going to show you how I set all of that up. So in my application, I have a front-end folder with my front-end application. I have the Superbase folder, which is the configuration for Superbase. And then I have this webhooks folder, which is a Nest JS API. I also have Superbase set up locally. So we can see that I have a fresh Superbase localhost instance. I have all of my tables for my project ready. Um, so all of that is already set up. So for this feature, I'm going to have to save two different things um, inside of my database. So here I'm going to use Superbase Vault, uh, which allows me to save secrets uh, inside of Superbase. Uh, and those secrets will be available in the Vault schema. And you can access those secrets. So the two secrets I'm going to need is the webhook secret, which here in this case is a dummy some super secret key. Uh, I'm working on localhost, so it's not very important. And then the second one is the webhook URL, which I'm going to need because depending on localhost or production, I have a different URL for my API. To set up those secrets, um, we can refer to the documentation of Superbase. So they can show you right here the query to create a secret. Um, so I can show you what I have for these particular secrets. I created the URL, which is here, which I named webhook URL, and I put a little description there. And then I have the some super secret key, which is the webhook secret, and the little description right there. So I run those commands manually um, because I don't want them included in my migration since in production they will be different. So I will run them separately on production as well. The next thing we want to do is to create a function in Postgres so we can generate a signature. Uh, in this case, we're going to use an HMAX signature, uh, which involves just the secret and the message that you want to encrypt. And then you just create a signature from this. Then your API will use the exact same secret, also generate the signature on their end, and then compare both signatures to see if they match. So let's have a look at the function. So I have my migrations right here. I created the latest migration right there. So this function is the function that will generate the signature. Uh, we're going to pass the secret key to it. We're going to pass the message, which in this case is going to be the payload of the webhook. Um, then we will generate the HMAX signature. And then we'll encode it in base64 so we can pass this signature easily through a header. The next thing we want to do is to create a function for our webhook so we are able to generate the signature and include it as a header before Superbase sends the request to our API. So the way Superbase set up the webhook is by using the HTTP request function that they created. Um, so we have an example here where we can create a trigger after insert with this table, and then we're calling this function called HTTP request. This function will take your URL, the method of the requests, and then the headers, the payload, and then the timeout. Now for our use case, we're going to have to intercept this request right here. So we can customize the URL and customize the headers as well to include the signature. So the way we do this is by creating a webhook function in Postgres. We will declare a couple of variables. We have URL, secret, payload, request ID, and the signature. We will fetch the decrypted secrets from Superbase Vault. So in this case, we're getting the webhook URL, we're getting the webhook secret, and we're going to store that into the URL variable and the secret variable. 
Then we build the payload. So this is typically the payload that Superbase will use. Uh, it will send the old record. It will send the new record. The type of operation, so you can have insert, update, or delete. And then the table on which this operation happens, and then the schema that this table is on. Uh, if you do an insert, your old record will be null. If you do an update, both of these will be available. So you'll have the old record and the new record. And if you do a delete, usually you have the old record, but the new record is empty. Then we'll take this payload and we'll generate a signature. So we'll use our function that we created before, the generate HMAX signature function, and we'll pass in the secret that we fetched from the vault and then the payload that we just built. Once we have this signature, we can send an HTTP POST request using the Postgres extension net, uh, pgnet. So we can do an HTTP POST. We're going to pass the URL. We'll pass our payload. There's no parameters in this case, so I pass just an empty object. Then we'll build the object for the headers. We're going to say that it's JSON, and then we're going to pass this X Superbase signature with our newly generated signature, which again is encoded in base64. Next, we're going to insert into the Superbase function hooks to kind of mimic what Superbase would do with their regular HTTP request function. Uh, and then we just return the new record. Now that we have this function, we can replace what Superbase recommend here, the HTTP request function, by our newly created webhook function. So for example, we can see this invitation webhook that I mentioned in earlier in the video. We have after insert, so every time we insert an invitation, right after the insert, we will trigger this webhook, and we will call our function right here. Now let's have a look at our API. So for this project, I am using an, a Nest.js API. So we have the code right here. Uh, this is a typical Nest.js installation. And so for the particular needs that I had, I created a package so we can listen to webhooks uh, from Superbase easily, and then we can verify the signature easily. So you can find this package on GitHub. Uh, it's freely available. It's called Nest.js Superbase webhook. So this package will take care of the heavy lifting of verifying the signature. Um, so we can go and take a look at the guard here, which is a feature of Nest.js um, to be able to run a middleware, basically, before running your function. And this guard will be able to verify the signature. So we'll take the payload of the request. We will generate the signature. Like I mentioned, my API also have the same secret as I have in my Superbase database. So we will generate that signature, and then we'll compare those signatures together. And if they do match, then we will return true, which will continue and execute whatever we have to do with our webhook. Or it will just like warn and then return false and prevent this webhook to run. Now, this package allows me to set up the webhook very easily in my API. So we can look at the documentation. All we have to do is to set up the module inside of our Nest.js application. So here I'm setting up the Superbase module. I will pass the secret, which is available as an environment variable in this case here. And then the header name, which is optional. By default, it will be X Superbase signature, but you can customize that to your liking. Next, we'll create a service in Nest.js. And for this service, we'll just create a method to just listen and do something with the event. Um, and then to specify which event we're listening to, we will use this decorator here, Superbase Event Handler. We will pass the type of operation we're listening for and then the table. You can also customize the schema as well. Let's have a look at how I set up this for my particular application. So I will go into the source folder. I will open the app module. We can see the definition of the Superbase module here. I pass the secret. I pass the header name, which again is optional. And then I want to log everything that is happening. So which event I'm listening to, Nest.js will be able to list them as the API starts. Next, I created a service, invitations. We can see this service here. I have my function. In this case, I'm sending an email using Postmark. And then I listen to the insert event on the invitation which again matches the trigger that we had earlier. So if I go back to our migration and we look at the trigger, it is after insert on the table invitation. Now that everything is set up, I can go back onto my application. I can send an invitation. We will use John Doe again. We will save the invitation. So this created the invitation in my project, as mentioned earlier. But now we have the trigger that has been triggered right here. So we can see that this webhook was triggered. And now our email was sent using Postmark. 
just for clarity, I also added a log to see if we were successfully identified. And this is the case here. We can see that we were successfully identified. So the signature was successfully validated. Now, if I try to send an event that doesn't have the right signature, so for example, here, I'm going to use Postman, and I'm going to try to send the exact same event. Uh, but now I'm not going to pass the signature. I'm just going to pass like a dummy signature. Let's pretend something like this. So I'm going to send this request. And you see that I have an internal server error. And now if I look at my API, I can see that the thing is not matching. Here in this case, the error is even different because this signature is not even encoded in base64, and it's not even an HMAX signature. So it's totally failing on that, on that end. And that's it. Now we have a more secure webhook with Superbase. So you can find those details in an article that I wrote on my website here, valentinpregnard.dev. Uh, so you can find all of the steps here detailed. If you like this type of content, you can like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.